Hello, I just wanted to talk a little bit today about um, some evidence-based practices that schools and teachers in the classroom can use to support students with emotional behavior disorders. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about are reasons why um, we really need to think about these students. Um, students with emotional behavior disorders face really difficult challenges. Um, they, when we think about different disability categories, they really, fa they face some of the steepest, um, challenges, um, in schools. Um, for instance, um, they have difficulty building relationships with peers and teachers. Um, the disability is also often, um, identified, identified late in their school career. Um, and this creates challenges in the sense that, well, it's identified late, so they don't get the, they don't always get the early intervention services that some students from other disability, disability categories um, have. Um, and it can make interventions difficult um, as they get older and things have not been addressed. Also, um, some of the reasons why it's identified late is when it comes with emotional behavior, when we're talking about emotional behavior disorders, we are talking about um, different, um, it could be different mental health issues um, that are under, that sometimes don't surface until um, adolescence. And so, that might be one reason why it hasn't been identified. Um, or sometimes they're just hard to identify until the problem, um, you know, they keep either ignoring the problem and it kind of blows up. And then um, it's after um, it's, things have been happening for a while, it's escalated. Um, also, with students with EBD, learning disabilities um, frequently coexist. Um, actually, more than half of students with um, EBD may meet one or more of um, another disability's uh, criteria. So I guess an example of that would be, um, so a student with a, like a learning disability may also be dealing with um, severe anxiety or um, obsessive compulsive disorder. And that would fall under that umbrella of an emotional disturbance that I did talks about um, uh, emotional disturbances is the, uh, the idea, um, category, the idea categorization requirement when we're looking at, um, giving a student, um, the label of emotional behavior, uh, disorder. Also students with, um, EBD have lower graduation rates and higher dropout rates of any category of students that are being served in special education. Um, they're more likely to be in a separate school because of their challenging behaviors, and they're more likely to be expelled or suspended than students with other disabilities. And that's interesting because a lot of times schools and people can be resistant of wanting to, to use the label of EBD because they think that if a student is labeled that way, they won't be able to discipline them that way. Um, but actually, when you look at the statistics, they're more likely to be expelled or suspended. Um, and this is also bad when we're thinking about that because a lot of these students have behaviors where they're isolating themselves um, because of stressors that are going on. Um, and challenges that they're having uh, dealing with uh, with emotions and behavior. And so when they're expelled or suspended, we're further isolating those students. Um, they're already struggling. 
And then also um, students with EBD are um, more susceptible to self-harm and to, to bull bullying. And so bullying, when I'm talking about that, they can either be the perpetrators, but they can also be the victims of bullying as well. Um, and then students with EBD have difficulties with um, sometimes obtaining employment, um, underemployment, or um, just job instability. And a lot of this comes from the fact that we have those low graduation rates um, and, or higher dropout rates. And so a lot of students that um, are leaving schools with this um, category, um, this labeled category, they're having a hard time finding good jobs because they're not getting, um, they're less likely to go to college, their wages are lower, um, and their jobs have um, minimal benefits. So how can we better support these students in our schools and classrooms? Um, one suggestion um, that the research talks about is offering mental health services in schools. And this is something that schools are really starting to look into and addressing is how to offer better mental health services. Um, you know, like a universal screening is one good way to um, check in to see if students have any um, concerning things going on that might um, let uh, the schools know that there could be an emotional behavior disorder. Um, and this could help um, schools to identify students earlier than what's happening now. Also, more school trained counselors and how to um, help students who have um, mental health needs. And then there's also um, a thing called a wraparound approach that Quinn and Lee talk about in a study. Um, and this is found to be really helpful for students with emotional behavior disorders. Um, this is a team-based approach. Um, it really focuses on building um, respectful and trusting partnerships with families. Part of that would be um, helping families um, overcome barriers for them to be involved in the process to support a student. Um, so for example, if the family has difficulty getting to a meeting or difficulty being at meetings where the, where the school is planning um, supports for a student, then the school's gonna work with the family to help them get the transportation to be at these meetings or um, they're going to schedule the meeting at a time where the family, it's going to be a, a um, time that's convenient for the family. Also, it really um, focuses on appreciating what the family has to say um, about the student and showing that they, that the family is really part of the team and that what they have to offer matters. Also, um, in the wraparound approach, there's natural supports for families. So you're including these natural supports. So if the family's a member of a church um, and they have somebody from the church they want to come to a meeting, uh, that person is welcome at the meeting and is received as a person that might have a view of the student that no one else has. And so that's a natural support for the family. Um, Community-based services are used um, in this wraparound approach. So that could mean that like a mental health um, service that um, might be part of the community, they might actually come into the school and work with the student in the classroom. Um, and when they're doing that, they're focusing on the strengths of the student. They're not focusing on the deficits and the challenges, but they're looking at these strengths and saying, okay, what are the strengths of the student and how can we use these strengths to support the student in um, dealing with these challenging behaviors? And then also um, another way we can support these students is by providing classroom supports. 
So some positive classroom supports that teachers can, can provide are clearly stating expectations so the student understands what's expected, um, laying it out. Um, so if you um, have directions of how you want something to do, giving that student step-by-step -step clear expectations of how you want it done. Um, rules need to be displayed clearly in the classroom. Explicitly teaching positive behaviors. Instead of um, always, you know, putting a student down and getting and them getting in trouble, um, sometimes these students don't understand what the positive behavior needs to look like. So you've got to explicitly show them and model those positive, positive behaviors. Um, and then offering emotional support is very important when working with students with EDD. Um, being able to talk to these students and trying to build a, a, a good relationship with these students, it can be difficult, but try to find out what's going on and being a listener, being a good listener um, and noticing when they're having a rough time and being okay with saying, hey, it seems like you're, you're um, getting frustrated. Why don't you take five minutes um, and then come back? And then when they come back, praise them for, for taking that five minutes um, and saying, hey, I think that's great that you took that five minutes. It's good that you realize that you needed that five minutes. Um, and then collaboration among school staff to help create individualized plans. You want um, school staff involved. You don't want it to just be one classroom teacher. You want to see what that child needs um, throughout the school to be successful. What, what kind of things can you implement across the board in the classrooms? And what, are, what is everybody seeing? Maybe someone's observing something that you haven't observed. And maybe they have an idea of something that could work better than what you're doing. And so sharing uh, with each other is really important when it comes to um, supporting these students. And collaborating with families is important. They have valuable information. And then lastly, another way that um, we can provide these positive supports is to offer training for educators in classroom management. and um, in emotional behavior disorders. Um, Garwood did a study where he looked into how um, providing classroom management uh, along with reading with literacy um, instruction could help improve students academically. And when we, he found that when um, good classroom management is used, um, along with quality instruction, um, students with EBD did really well in the classroom. Um, and so one of his suggestions was um, that educators need training on classroom management. They want it and they need it. And um, it would also be beneficial for them to have training in emotional behavior disorders and how to support those students. Um, some other uh, positive classroom supports. Um, peer mediated interventions have been found um, in the research to work. This means like um, peer tutoring or peer buddies. So not only does this offer academic support, but it also offers students um, opportunities to build relationships with their peers. So when things are going well and the student is showing positive behavior, there's like those natural rewards where they're, ha they're building positive relationships and having positive interactions with their peers. Also, it offers students um, who sometimes have trouble with feeling positive about themselves because they have had these challenging behaviors and they've probably experienced a lot of um, negative experiences in school of getting in trouble where you could find a strength so maybe they have an academic strength and you can put them as the leader in a group saying hey i know you're really good at this um will you show i do you mind helping so and so in this area because you're so good at this and that can help build some um, confidence in those students and that they need and you might um 
see that it could also help build um, a more positive relationship with you and that student. And then self-management interventions are also um, a good support for students with EBD. So um, that would involve teaching a student how to self-monitor or how to self-evaluate a task, um, setting goals, and this would involve a gradual release of responsibility. So the teacher would teach a student how to do this, and you would model, and you would work with the student, and give that student a lot of feedback and support as you first start this out. And then you would slowly release that responsibility to the student. So then they would really be responsible for that self-monitoring, that self-evaluation of what they're doing. Um, and then lastly, there's some teacher-mediated um, interventions that have been found to uh, be successful when working with students with EBD. So one um, teacher um, intervention would be model, rehearse, and feedback. So again, that would be if you're doing an academic task, you might say it's in writing, model um, how to write um, supporting details um, in a paper that you're writing. And then you would have the student rehearse that task. And while they're rehearsing, you would give them immediate feedback. And so it makes it a less risky um, activity for the student because they're getting that immediate feedback and support from you. And um, this is important for students with um, EBD because sometimes they're, they're afraid to take those risks. Um, because their self-esteem um, may not be um, very high because of the negative school experiences they've had. Then also story mapping is another teacher uh, mediated, mediated intervention that's been found um, to be successful with students with EBD, token economies. So those are all examples where the teachers leading these interventions um, to help support the student in the classroom. Here are my references um, of the articles that I used to create this presentation. Um, so again, these are just some examples of ways that we can help students um, with emotional behavior disorders, how we can more um, positively support them in schools in the classroom. And I hope um, this was helpful. Thank you.